we present a real-time method to drive a hyper-realistic 3D face avatar from binocular video. Our method relies on a person-specific model with three components, data capture, offline training, and real-time facial animation. Data capture is done with FaceStar, a custom binocular camera system. We ask the user to follow a prompt video covering a range of expressions and speech and capture them under a variety of lighting conditions. In the one-time offline training step, we estimate the parameters of the user's pre-trained face appearance model using an image by synthesis approach on the videos collected with FaceStar. Our offline face model fitting method takes the training videos as input and can accurately decouple the rigid pose and non-rigid facial expression parameters and reconstruct the avatar with the same facial motions as the input image. We learn a new lighting model for each video. This lighting model is conditioned on the head pose, facial expression, and camera view now puts a gain and bias map for each frame. These gain and bias maps help to relight the avatar and more closely match the input image. We use the estimated face appearance model parameters to train a person-specific encoder which can be used to drive a hyper-realistic 3D face avatar in real time. This live demo shows the FaceStar binocular camera being used to drive the user's 3D avatar which can then be viewed from any angle. A frontal and side view of the avatar are displayed on the monitor. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N. We use the two camera views from FaceStar in our system. Here, we run an ablation study to characterize the importance of using two views rather than one. Using only one view causes a clear offset when projecting the fitted avatar onto the reference image due to the scale ambiguity when solving for depth. Note the depth error along the line of sight incurred by single view estimation which is not present in the binocular view. Using two views provides better rigid motion estimates, which help the avatar align better to the reference image. A critical challenge for our method is the adaptation of our trained person-specific encoder to a new lighting scenario. When directly applying our encoder to a test video with new lighting conditions, we fail to transfer the user's facial expression. To solve this problem, we propose a few-shot learning-based domain adaptation method. We uniformly sample K frames from a test video and adapt the encoder. This adapted encoder helps recover the correct facial expressions. We find that using 256 frames achieves a good balance between avatar expression quality and training time, taking approximately 15 minutes to train. We first compare our method to the non-parametric avatar method looking good. Using the image pair from FaceStar, we estimate the depth map using the stereo algorithm. Lookin' Good takes this low-quality RGBD data as input and performs completion, super-resolution, and denoising to render a complete volumetric representation. This representation smooths over the face and misses details. This is more apparent when flipping between the input and output images. Our method can produce high-quality avatar animation while retaining high-frequency face details. When applying the trained looking good model to a test video with new lighting conditions, we are unable to generate a clean volumetric avatar. Our lighting model enables us to quickly adapt and drive the user's avatar under unseen lighting conditions using only the original RGB images. We now compare our method to a real-time, landmark-based face tracking approach. This method optimizes a rigid head pose and non-rigid facial expressions based on 2D face landmarks and optical flow. These sparse feature points are not able to completely describe the wide range of possible facial expressions resulting in inaccurate avatars. Our method more closely tracks the input image and produces more accurate and detailed expressions as shown in this flip test. We also compare with other methods of lighting adaptation for face tracking. Neither the 1 by 1 convolution layer from Yoon et al. nor spherical harmonics from Lee et al. can describe complex illumination differences, resulting in blurred and inaccurate face details in the reconstructed avatar. Our lighting model can describe lighting well and give satisfying avatar results. Here we show more results of the offline face model fitting. Our method is able to reconstruct avatars from multiple different users under different lighting conditions while preserving detail and subtle facial motions. The gain and bias maps for our lighting model vary per frame and can change dramatically due to variations in head pose and expression. 
Finally, we show some more real-time facial animation results. Externally recorded audio, in combination with our method, can be used to drive a complete face avatar. Why put such a high value on being top dog? A good morrow to you, my boy. Multiple users are able to use our method at the same time to hold a hyper-realistic video conference with their avatars. I was actually really impressed. Can you, like, I don't know, show me a surprised face. Does that work pretty well? Nice. <laughs> I was trying to do an angry face. <laughs> uh, hmm. <laughs> yeah. Our method works well even when the user is wearing glasses and provides satisfactory results. Glasses and other similar elements are not modeled in the pre-trained face appearance model. Our method can also be used in AR applications. Here, we augment the user's avatar by adding a tattoo texture on the tracked mesh. Our method can also be applied to other consumer RGBD cameras. In this example, we show the results of estimating the face parameters from RGBD images captured by an iPhone XS. Our tracked avatar can accurately match the input image and depth. Thank you. Please see our paper for more details.